All right, so from whence we last left off, um, we basically had this uh, website. Okay, so we have our images, and I just have this one portrait, and I have this index, and this is probably going to go over here. It did. Come on. All right. And it looks a little bit like this, okay? And it's more or less just an exploration. We're going to kind of continue on with that exploration, uh, but make it maybe look a little bit better as well, and just organize it better, because... Um, currently, as you can see, it's basically just kind of going straight down, um, uh, and it's not it's not um, it's not chunked as well as I would like. Okay, so we are going to do some of that. All right, so I want to open this up in uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And of course, it's going to go off screen again. Boop, boop. Minimize that. Okay. So, <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, what we had initially, basically, is all of this code is in line, which I don't want to do. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and take all this out first, and then we will go through and um, put in the new code. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do view toggle word wrap and I'm just going to get rid of all the style tags okay so um, <clears throat> if you remember there's three ways of putting CSS in you can do inline which means that you put a style um, attribute inside of the tag itself all throughout the code that's one way another way is internal which we're going to do this time and that's putting it at the top and the last way is an external sheet, which is on a totally separate document that's linked to this, much like you link a picture or uh, a link to a website or whatever, okay? <clears throat> so for this, um, what we're going to do is um, uh, basically take away out here and make it internal. Now, it, most of the time, quite frankly, you don't want to do inline. The only reason to do inline is that if you're trying to do it as the internal embedded at the top and it's not working, or if you're using um, a CMS content management system like WordPress or something, and it's not working, <clears throat> you can uh, you can try to force it by putting it directly on the element itself, and hopefully it will you know take a hold. Okay, um, but most of the time that's not the case because it, it's harder to find issues. If you need to change something, you have to go through every element and look for it. It's 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 a lot more difficult. So I'm just going to take all of these style attributes out of elements here. That one can stay. That's not a style. Boom. So I'm just going to go through and just get rid of all of this busyness. Boom. And we're instead going to reorganize it and make it a little bit better. Okay. So basically just get rid of all the styles Inside of all of the elements that do not need to be there. Okay, so now that's good. If I save it and if I preview it, it's going to look crappy again. It's going to be just straight white going on down. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is basically break this into to sections, okay? So, um, if you look, we have, uh, you know, there's this top part, which is kind of like, we'll say a header, right? It's got my name, it's got a portrait, and it says a thing, and then it has this bottom line, right? So that's clearly one chunk that's supposed to be together, right? Then we have what I would call one big area, which is the content, right? And then we'll say all this, and then we'll call this a, a footer, okay? And then inside of the content kind of has subsections where it has these like three articles. Okay. Right now, none of these elements are connected in any way. So all I'm going to do is, is group them using divs. Okay. So the divs basically, it's just a way of nesting stuff. So just like if I want to affect everything, I can put in the body and it affects everything that's nested inside of it, which is all of this. I can make another thing called the div. So after body, I'm going to go ahead and go div. And we'll just make a generic div for now. Actually, woo, uh, did we get, no, we didn't do that yet. Okay. Um, 
So I'll make a div and I'll control X to cut that. And then after the horizontal rule is when we'll call it done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have the div end there. And then I will tab that in. Okay, so now um, those are all inside of this div. And I'm just gonna hit, um, put a space in between like that. And then I'll make another div that will be basically my content. So I'm gonna grab all of this and control X. And we'll say right here close the div there okay then I'm gonna take everything so basically after he says he has none um, all of this and tab that in so we all re so we realize all of that is inside of this div which is like my content we'll call it and then the last one we'll call the uh, footer which I'm just gonna put after that break so we'll just do another div here control X and just make sure I in there and again I'm just going to tab this in so it's obvious that it is up uh, oops I missed one part sorry okay. uh, this isn't actually necessary but it's it makes it a lot easier and a, and a lot uh, simpler to understand okay so div div we got um, all this stuff in there and then I was going to put divs inside of this divs for each one of these chunks okay so inside of here I'm going to put another div okay end it here and I'm just going to close it okay and then I'll put another div here control X and I'll put it for the break control I didn't mean to do that I meant V I hit V control V okay and then we'll put another line here div I'm gonna go ahead and take these breaks out just to make it a little bit easier on me. Good, okay. And now obviously all of these need to be um, tabbed in from those, right? So I'm gonna tab and then, oops, that should be like that. Okay, so this needs to be tabbed too. Okay, so you can see this H2 and this P are part of this div. And then I'm just gonna tab, tab, and tab, And I must have accidentally he has none. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Somehow that got uh, I don't know what happened there. Okay. Something happened there, I'm not sure, but um, that's still the top one. Why is that not? Oh I'm still okay. Something got weird there. Okay. And then we'll just make sure we have okay, so uh, you'll notice when I click on one, it'll highlight the other one. So when I have this one selected, that the closing one is that. And when I click on this one, you can see it's highlighting that. This one's highlighting that. And this one's, oops, this one's highlighting that. So you can see, okay. Now, if I go to save this and we open it, it'll probably look mostly the same. There might be a, it might move it a little bit because the divs might be given like margin. So they might move, but it, it'll probably look exactly the same. Because we haven't done anything to these. We haven't targeted these divs. We've merely just created divisions, okay? So what we're going to do now is um, take each one of those and basically give them um, some style and stuff, right? So we're going to do an internal style sheet. So to do that, it's just this style. And then you put your CS rules right inside of here. So instead of having, um, instead of putting them internally and putting them on the things, you put them in here. But um, we need a selector and then we need uh, the properties that we're going to basically adjust, right? So Let's start off with just the basic selectors. So I can select any of these elements. Me, I can select an H1, an IMG, a P, a div, an HR, any one of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select body and do my generic settings that will put across the entirety of it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just tab in and do body and then curly brace. And then I put in whatever properties I want. So we'll just do a background color, background color. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to go with dim gray because that's how I would describe my life. Okay, dim gray, and then we'll do font uh, family, 
And I think last time I did what? The, this one? Franklin, maybe? I don't know. But we'll go with that. Um, and then we'll do margin. And I'll put 0 px. And then padding. I'll also put 0 px. Um, and then color. Uh, we'll just do black just to make sure that it is indeed black. Okay. And now if I save that, you're going to see that it's going to target the body. And since everything exists inside the body, everything that we see in the web page, that will now show up. So um, we have style and we only have one CSS rule currently. All right. And it's just it looks for body and anything with body, it applies these. But all of its children also inherit it. OK, so now if I look here and hit control R, you can see, yay, right? Um, and all my padding has gone. Okay, so that looks acceptable. All right, so let's target some other stuff here. So let's say we want to target the H1, right? So that's my main heading, so I'll do H1, okay? And just to make this a little bit smaller, I'm going to go like that just to clean it up a little. Oops, okay. Uh, and we'll just do font size. And then I'm just going to say, let's do, I don't know, 48px, okay? I'm just going to go like that, so that goes back, and then I'll hit Control S, and then you're going to see Control R, it's going to target it, and then that grabs it, okay? So instead of writing it in here, right inside of here, right in style, uh, this is actually a little bit easier and quicker to write, uh, we write it up on the top, and then we need to make any changes, everything's all on the top, and it's hunky-dory, right? So that's pretty good. All right. Um, and I can target anything in here that I want. So, uh, you know, the P elements, uh, so on and so forth. I think the rest of it, um, I'm going to leave alone. All right. So let's say that there's something in particular I want to change, right? So um, actually, let's do, um, let's just say we want to, uh, I want to, um, you know, affect these things here, right? So, um, if you're doing one item, right? If there's only one of them, then you just go ahead and you do an ID, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create IDs because right now if I say div, I, I it will affect all these divs. It'll affect this div, this div, th these divs underneath that div, on top of that div, and these divs here. So what I need to do is I need to give these divs specific names so that way I know what they are. So I'm going to go div ID and I'm going to give it a name of header. Okay. So now this divs ID is header. So now I can select this div by selecting header specifically. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and actually that was the wrong one. Sorry. This will be this one. ID. This one I want header. This one is going to be class, or not class, sorry. This one's going to be content. So that is how I will grab all of my content. And then the last one, ID, I'm going to make this one footer, okay? So each one of these have an ID, and there's just one of them and no others. So now I can go up here and target those specifically, okay? So let's just go ahead and do background colors for all of them, just so we can see how it works, all right? So to target an ID... It's hashtag or pound symbol if you're old school like me, and then the name of it. So header, and then curly braces. And now I can do background color, and let's do, um, light gray, light gray, okay? Um, let's change this to an A too, because I'm American, there we go. So light gray. Like so, control S, and now you're going to see when I go here and hit control R, this whole section will have light gray applied to it, which is pretty cool, right? Um, let's also, just on this, just to further show, let's do text align, text align, and let's just center it, center, and save it, and let's put it over here, control R. And now you can see all the elements inside of it are now centered. Okay. Yay. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
wasn't too bad, right? Now, let's say... Well, I'll do that after. Okay. So, we'll call that good. Now, let's do the other one. So, now let's do a hashtag, um, and it was content. Okay. And we'll do background color again. Background color. And let's do um, dark... And I think it's not actually that dark. I'm gonna hover over it because I think it'll let me let's see. There we go. It's not dark enough for me. So I'm gonna hover over it. I'm just gonna go really, really dark. Okay. And then uh, uh, delete. And then with the last section, I'm just going to um, copy what the header is. So we'll just do hashtag footer like that. But I'm gonna copy just these here. Control C. Control V, and just tab that in, and then to back up, it's Shift Tab. We'll go the other way, and I got an extra thing here. Okay, so I'm gonna save that, and then you're gonna notice this is gonna be too dark now. See how dark that is? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and my content just go ahead and make color uh, white. So color, if you remember, that's the, the content color, which content is the, uh, the text. And now the text is now white. All right, so you can kind of see we're able to basically affect each chunk, each section now through using their IDs, okay, which is pretty cool. Okay, now um, let's say I have these paragraphs, right? So each one of these are kind of like an article. And I want each one to be able to, I want to be able to affect them, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put IDs on them, right? No. Um, IDs are if there's only one of them. Otherwise, it's a class. So if it's something that's going to be applied to multiples, you use class. If it's a single, you use um, ID. Um, class. And then we will call this um, uh, section. And I'm just going to copy that so I don't have to paste every time. So we're just going to go Control C. I'm going to put it inside of this div. Control V. And I'm going to put it inside of this div. Control V. All right. And now when I go up here, to select a class is dot and then the name. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and we will say, um, uh, trying to think of something that would be a little bit more obvious that it's each one of those. Let's just do borders, right? So we'll do border um, uh, hyphen style and we'll just do it's going to do solid. I like solid the best. And then border hyphen width and we'll just do 3px and then we need color. Border hyphen color and we will do wheat. <laughs> All right, and then we'll save it. And now when I go to here, control R, you're gonna see that each section here now has that applied to it. You see it's double thickness here, it's because it's from this one and it's from this one, so they're touching right here. So if you wanted to have a little bit of a gap, we could go ahead and if you want a gap between those, we could just do margin and just do, let's say, uh, 10px, and again, if I go here, control R, now you'll see there's a gap between them. And if you look, you see this text is really like tight to this. Let's go ahead and add padding too. Padding, and let's just do 25px, px. Now, if you look here, control R, it's now got padding from the outside uh, to the inside, okay? You can see that's kind of uh, looking pretty okay, right? All right, good. So, um, so again, um, if classes are for multiples and uh, IDs are for one. Now, can you use a class if it's only being applied to one element? Yes. Can you use ID on multiple elements? It does seem to work, to be honest. Uh, by default, what I would say is just make everything a class, because that way you wouldn't have to worry anyway. Um, most of the times what you're going to see, but occasionally you'll see some IDs thrown in there, but 
Uh, I'll probably use both just because they both exist, but quite honestly, you only really need class because you could just have one of class and who cares, right? It's the difference. Um, okay. So, uh, we did that. Um, I want to see what else I want to put in here. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, so, let's say I want to grab uh, the P element. Um, if I was trying to grab this H2 specifically, I could just put an ID on it. So, I do H2, or I do, you know, ID, H, um, ID equals quotes, and I would say, like, you know, second paragraph heading or something, give it a name. And then I would just do hashtag yada 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 right um but uh for what we're doing here um i don't really need to do that okay uh, i just wanted to check see what we need to do all right so um let's say uh because we haven't done this yet anyway so let's put some of these in here so i have this header part here and it just says uh not that this guy, and I have my name, the man, the myth, legend. It might be nice if maybe my website was underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is this. So the man, the myth, the legend, I'm just going to, um, underneath that, uh, I'm going to put a, um, a, so this is how we're gonna do a link, okay? So it's a, href, stands for a horizontal reference. I would like to know what things mean. Um, and then it's gonna be the website, uh, location. So the easiest way to do it, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I'm just going to go to teach me, oops, teach me cone, and then just come on, control C, and I'm just going to paste that in here, control V, all right, and then um, that, and then you'll see it does a closing, and then what you put inside is what's going to be um, represented. So I'll just put, you know, teach me column and actually let's do just to make it easier teach me column all right so i'm going to put that here all right and i want you to take it i'm going to control c and i'm also going to put it at the very end control v okay and let's save it let's just see what that looks like control r okay so teach me column and teach me column that's great all right um but let's say i want to do something to this one but not to this one, okay? Um, like I want this one to be bigger or something. Uh, now what I could do is I could put an ID on it, that would totally work, or I can use descendancy. So um, what I could do is go like this. I could say, okay, I wanna grab the first one in the first section. So I'm gonna go ahead and do hashtag header, then space A quotes, and then I can just do font size, just to say I want to make it bigger. We'll do 36px. And what that's going to do is to say, okay, look in the header, and then the A element in the header, apply whatever's in there, okay? And this one, control R. It didn't really change much. Um, I have to do this, control S. Um, text decoration done. Control S. Hmm, it's affecting it, but it's not. Uh... Oh, because I did header. Uh, I did head, not header. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So make sure you put the right names in, because obviously, if you don't put the right name in there, then it isn't going to work. Okay. So now you can see it's affecting this, but it's not affecting the bottom one, okay? So you can grab things by doing that. It also goes the other way. So let's say, for instance, um, uh, you know, I have uh, the, I'm trying to think of a way to do this. Um, what, what do I have up here already? So we have footer, header, which one? Um, Let's say I want this font size to apply to other things. So I could do, let's say I want to apply to multiples. I could do this in H2. So if I do comma H2, 
it's going to apply to both H1 and H2. So now you see those are also bigger, okay? So that's another thing you can do. So if you're trying to do apply the same thing to multiples, you can just comma, put a bunch of selectors in there, and then put your stuff in there. Um, let's do uh, let's do a new ID. So let's do hashtag, and we'll call it like um, Boulder. Oops, that's a lowercase. Boulder text, we'll call it. Okay, and I'll just do um, the text width. The width. Font weight, font weight. There we go. And then I'm just gonna make it super thick. We'll go 900. Okay. So basically, anything that has that, it's gonna make it 900. Okay. Now, uh, actually, let's make that a class too. Sorry, dot class. That way. I can, okay. So let's say that we have um, this content here, right? Now, or, or the section. See how it says, we'll do it the second one. See how it says class section? If I also want this class to also affect it, all you have to do is just put a space and then just put that in there. So that was, what was the name of it? I already forgot, Boulder text. Boulder text. And so now both of these are going to affect it. So if there's another one, I would type it just like that and it would also affect those. And so you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but see how they're all bolder now? See how that's bold and that's not so. This was already bold because it was already in H2, and by default H2s are bold, uh, but it made everything in here bold, okay? So if you want to apply multiple classes to the same thing, so you can make it just a bunch of generic classes and then just plop them on items that you want, uh, and that would be fine, okay? Um, all right, so we did that, we did that. I uh, just want to make sure, oops, you're not what I wanted. Oh, span. Okay. So let's say we want to affect just some area, right? So um, right now I have divs. Divs are for whole chunks. So um, when we write our code, you may have noticed that every time I write a P, it starts on a new line, right? Remember we talked about that before? It's, a, it's what we call a block level element. There are other elements that don't start on a new line. So for instance, this strong, right, that's in here, which now you can't see. I'm going to leave that there this emphasis that's in here, that doesn't start on a new line. It exists inside keep doing that, inside of the paragraph. You can see it right here. But notice that it's it, it, not like it's hitting enter and going to the next line. It doesn't do that, right? Um, but some things do do that. Most of the ones we've been using do. So like P elements and H, you know, it's like you do an H1. When I do a P element, it starts on a new line, right? Um, Divs do the same thing. So, for instance, if I put a div in here, I'm just going to do this for an example. Don't do it. I'm just showing you. Oops. Um, div. If I put a div in here, okay, and I save it, see, it's going to start on a new line, okay? Um, so, they're block level. But let's say you want to change something. You want to, I want to grab, you know, this word here. And I want it to be, I want to do something to it, like make it bright red, let's say. Um, in order to do that, uh, what I can do instead, and it's the same thing, uh, is span. So span is just like a div where it will, it will group something. And I'm just going to put it on the other side of this. Actually, let's put it for that. Okay. Uh, where it'll say this is a group. And I'm just going to give it uh, um an ID, so we'll do um, ID, and I'll just say, you know, red font. It's not a good name because it's not semantic, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna call it red font, so I'm just gonna go up here. Hashtag red font, okay? I'm just gonna say color red, and I'll save it. And what you're gonna see now, keep doing that, R is that now this is red, okay? But it stays in where it is. So if you want to grab like a particular letter or a particular word or a particular area of a paragraph or an element, I mean, you can do it in anything. I do it in each one. I could do it in a list. I could do it wherever. Um, you just throw a span on there and that will, it won't mess with the lineup. It won't, it'll, it'll be an inline element still. It won't be a block level. Inline 
will just keep going to the right until it gets to the edge, and then it will start on the next line. That's in line. Okay. Block levels always are a new line. Okay. Um, I think we did that. Um, also, be aware that the more specific your um, selectors are, the more they're going to take precedent, right? So um, you'll notice that, uh, like, if I just did an A link up here, so let's just do another one. We'll do A link, okay? For example, if I do an A link, and what I did, okay, we'll do font size again. But this time I'm going to go really small. Let's just do 8px, and we'll control S, and I'll control R. And as you're going to see, look how small it made it. See, it made it really small, but watch. It didn't affect this one. The reason being is because this is more specific, right? There's more information. So the more specific the, the selection is, the more it's going to supersede a broad one, okay? So that's another thing to keep uh, into uh, keep in memory. Um, and then, okay. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, how to edit the image. I think that would be it. Okay. So right now we have this picture in here. And if you look, uh, where's the picture? So uh, I have this width 360. Okay. So if I took this out, if you remember, it's going to be gigantic. Okay. Um, 360 looks like it's pretty good. I think that's a okay size. Um, but otherwise, it's really large, and I don't want to use that, right? Now, this does work, but the problem is, if for some reason the code got messed up, it's going to end up being huge. But also, if you have a really big picture, but the viewer's only viewing this much, they still have to download that big picture. And so, for one, it's going to take up more space on your site, on their computer. Um, it's going to download slower. It's just bad etiquette. So what you want to do is have your images the actual size that they're going to show up in your website. So that picture that I'm, I'm sourcing, this portrait, it's actually too large for my website. So I'm going to need to edit that, okay? Um, so uh, I do have a video tutorial. Uh, it's like image adjustments um, that you can see in it's Photoshop. I'm just going to show you how to quickly uh, crop the tool. If you don't have Photoshop installed, there's this um, awesome little, um, come on, man, get out of here. There you go. There's this awesome uh, alternative called Photo P. And we'll just set uh, open from computer. Okay. And I'm just going to go to desktop and then I don't even know which one it is. Uh, should be your last name, right? I think. Your last name, images. There we go. I'm gonna grab that and open. And there it is. Okay. Yay. Now I can do a couple things. I could try to crop this um, using this. Um, let's do a fixed size. So you can see width. Height is now 100 by 100, and I'm just going to go ahead, and I think I did oh, fixed ratio, 1 by 1. It doesn't give me an exact size, though. We'll do fixed ratio. So if I want to crop this, let's say there's other parts of it, like I have my whole body. I could do this, so I, I can I didn't mean to rotate it. Let's try that again. Okay. I could click and drag, let's say, let's just do free, okay. So I'll do free, and I'm just going to go ahead and just size it so that it's more my face, which is makes the image actually worsen. And we'll go like that, so I'll just have the select tool, make sure this is free, and then just hit enter, and then it's going to crop the picture, okay. Now that cropped the picture so it's, it's more what I want, but it didn't change the size of it. It did, but it only cut it, it's still really big. Uh, to make sure it's exactly at 360, because I kind of like that 360, I'm just going to go to image, and we're going to do image size. And then, um, so you see right here, it says it's 828. I'm just going to go ahead and type in 360. Enter. You can see it automatically adjusted. And then, um, I'll make this 72. 
Not, it actually ain't gonna matter to be honest with you, but oh, it does change the other ones. Okay. Okay, so make sure it's 360, and then uh, make sure resample's on. By linear is probably the best, and hit OK. Boom. Now the image is that size that I wanted that I had typed into width. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and save it. So I'm just going to do file. Um, I can save as a PD or export. And let's export. I think it was a PNG, wasn't it? As a PNG. And that's fine. And it's going to download it. I'll hit OK. Just going to grab that, Let's minimize all this, drop it like it's hot, and then inside of here where I have my images, I have that portrait. I'm just going to delete that guy and plop this guy in there. Apparently, it was a JPEG; it wasn't a PNG. So anyway, I'm going to put him in there. And now watch this. I've hit Control R. It's missing, and the reason why it's missing is because uh, it's sourcing a JPEG that the the it's no longer the right name anymore. So I have to change this to PNG because it was looking for JPG. And now I will save it and go here and control R and boom, there it is. And notice that the proportions are different because I cut it or whatever. So it wasn't exactly the same scale as it once was. Um, but all of your pictures should be the size that you want them to be. So it's not bad practice to go in here and put the width in there. Go ahead and put the width in there. But then when you're done and everything looks good, go to all of your pictures and make sure that their widths are all the same as this and that is proportionate. Don't, you know, change this, the, the, don't skew the image. Um, uh, that you do that. Now, it would be better if you did this in Photoshop, but some of you, and you should have access to it this uh, semester, the... Uh, what is this? This is fall 2020. Um, just in case I get this video later. Uh, it should all be there, but uh, you should be able to download it for free. You should have gotten an email. But if you didn't, Photo P is actually a really nice alternative. It looks a lot like Photoshop. And it's free and it runs right in the browser, which is pretty awesome. So um, it's a little bit different, but it has quite a bit of the tools still. So um, that should work for you. Uh, so once you are done and you've done all of those things, I just want to make sure I got everything I wanted you to do. I think, I think that's good. Once you're done with that, just go ahead and save it. Uh, you know, hit control S or whatever, close out of this, close out of this, close out of this, make sure it's your last name and then put week three. Okay. Because the file folder is open. Do I have it in something else? Maybe because it's this is open? I guess leave page. Try again. Try again. It's open in something. Maybe this. There isn't too many things open right now. Uh, let me see. Is it open in here? Nope. Okay. So your last name. Three. It's not, there's nothing else open, so I don't know. Uh, save as your last name, week three, okay? And then what you're going to want is to right click and then just send to the press zip folder. I want the entire folder itself, right? This is all of it. And then you're just going to submit that on to Blackboard. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so um, good luck.